let me start with what is probably the most dangerous crisis in the history of, of mankind. Obviously, if it comes to a third world war, which this time would be nuclear, we would face the extinction of the human species because not only would there be a nuclear exchange of nuclear missiles, but following it would be a nuclear winter. And I think it was Kennedy who said, in a nuclear war, those who die first are the lucky ones because what comes in the weeks to follow is so horrible that people would wish to be dead. Now, if that would happen, and we are very close to it, everything mankind ever produced would be worthless. All the beautiful compositions of Beethoven for nothing. The writings of Shakespeare, of Plato, Confucius, Pushkin, the great statecraft of people like Lincoln, Leonardo da Vinci, and I could go on with the list, all would be for nothing. There would be even not a historian left to investigate why this happened. Any policy consideration that does not start with that reflection is obviously insane. And out of it follows that everything has to be done to prevent the outbreak from, of nuclear war. Now, on the 3rd of January this year, the permanent five of the UN Security Council again reiterated the very important sentence, nuclear war cannot be won and therefore must never be fought. That's a noble uh, statement, but unfortunately, the reality is quite different. Because in the recent period, the idea of a winnable nuclear war has become quite spread. And obviously, this idea is absolutely, completely insane. On the 27th of April, the Wall Street Journal had an article with the headline, the US should demonstrate that it can win a nuclear war. And then it proceeded to quote former Deputy Secretary of the Navy, says Corpsey, or Cropsey, Corpsey would be more adequate, that the US should prepare to win a nuclear war, that the US warships should be equipped with nuclear warheads to destroy Russian nuclear submarines, and in that way to eliminate the Russian second strike capability. Now, it is highly questionable that that would be possible to destroy the second strike capability because of the less capable early warning system and air warning systems of the Russians. They have installed an automatic second strike capability for the case if the Russian leadership would be eliminated through a first strike by the US or NATO, they have in place a doomsday machine which automatically would send off uh, nuclear weapons to destroy the attacker. Now, the same idea of a winnable nuclear war uh, was the basis of a maneuver which took place in January of this year called Global Lightning which uh, played out the idea of a hybrid nuclear conventional war, then a nuclear strike occurs by one or the other side. And the assumption would be that the US and NATO would be capable to survive a nuclear first strike by Russia and China. Then the war continues using other le lethal uh, systems like a missile defense system, directed energy weapons, EMP weapons, laser, cyber war, attacks from space, and go on for weeks and weeks. Now, this is obviously what no, would not happen. Ted Postol, the nuclear specialist, former professor of MIT, developed in various articles, which I can only advise people to, to study, why there is no limited nuclear war, because there is a basic difference between conventional and nuclear war. And it is the character of nuclear war that once one nuclear weapon is used, it is the logic of that war that all will eventually come into use. Now, in a recent dialogue with Robert Chia, Ted Postol describes what would be the effects of nuclear bombs. 
please show the video. We are talking about a wall of fire that encompasses everything around us at the temperature of the center of the sun. That will literally turn us to less than ash if this thing gets going. I can't emphasize how powerful these weapons are. When they detonate, they are actually four or five times hotter than the center of the sun, which is 20 million degrees Kelvin. There are 100 million degrees Kelvin at the center of these weapons. Human beings can't imagine the scale of such heat. This is beyond anything that human beings have been able to imagine. And I don't know how to emphasize how dangerous this is. He then further describes that a single nuclear weapon would wipe out an urban area with a radius of five miles or an area of about 75 square miles, and that it would only take 20% of the American ICBMs available to destroy all of Russia's ICBM, land-based ICBMs, maybe a thousand, and thus 80% of the warheads could be used for other purposes, for example, against targets in Russia, China, or Germany for that matter. Now that reality does not prevent global Britain to play the nuclear chicken game. There was recently an article by Malcolm Chalmers, the Deputy Director General of the Royal United Service Institute, RUSI, and they described themselves as the world oldest and leading UK defense and security think tank, and they are closely associated with the British military and the British royal household. They are proposing a Cuban missile on steroids, that's how they call it, which could result over the Ukrainian attempt to retake Crimea, which would make it easier in their view to settle the Ukraine-Russia war. The headline of the article is, this war still presents nuclear risks, especially in relation to Crimea, and it was published on May 20th. Chalmers discusses how Russia could be forced into a nuclear confrontation by sending ever more sophisticated weapons to Ukraine to boil the Russian frog. Now, you all know the story, if you saw at least so the story goes, if you throw a frog into boiling water, the frog would jump out. But if you put the frog into cold water and then slowly turn up the heat, the frog gets cooked. Now, they think that boiling the Russian frog, you can arri uh, uh, arrive at by progressively increasing the size and sophistication of the weapons they have prepared to supply Ukraine. Um, so because of those weapons, uh, Ukraine would then be able reversing the most of Russia's recent territorial gains, including Gerson and even Mariupol. Also, those weapons and territorial gains to destroy could be used to destroy bridges, railheads, storage sites and air bases inside Russia. Then they would move to retake Crimea strike at a, quote, tempting target, like the Kerch Bridge, for example. And now this would lead to a Crimea, Crimea missile crisis, Chalmers argues. A specific threat to use nuclear weapons in relation to Crimea might be viewed by Putin as a way to restore some of his coercive power if he and the United States doubted whether he would deliver on such a threat. If a red line were not accepted by Ukraine, Russia might then feel that it had to consider a series of further escal escalatory options, such, such, such as putting its nuclear forces on even a higher alert. They are already on alert. <clears throat> Faced with the alternative of the likely loss of Crimea, Putin might believe that the Ukraine, with the US encouragement, would be likely to blink first. It would be a moment of extreme peril with all the parties seeking to understand the intent of each other, even as they looked to pursue their national interest. Precisely because of the peril inherent in such a situation, 
a nuclear crisis of this sort could make it easier for leaders to make a difficult, difficult compromise. Provided that the war was ended and the blockade of Odessa lifted, Ukraine leaders might be willing to postpone the settlement of the Crimea question. For Putin, the failure of the invasion and the subsequent success of the Ukrainian counteroffensive would, be, would have been a massive humiliation. But he would at least be able to argue that the might of the Russian strategic arsenal had at the moment of great national weakness successfully deterred NATO's designs for dismembering Russia. This could be enough for both sides to avoid the worst outcome of all. This is absolute complete insanity. What he calls the Crimean Cuba missile crisis on steroids would mean that the two largest nuclear powers would basically go to the absolute brink of nuclear war. Now, obviously, this Rusi is only a think tank, but it is one which informs British policy. And therefore, the question is, if, is, is this not a violation of Article 2, Number 4 of the UN Charter? Because this is not just the form, some form of incitement to war, but an incitement for nuclear war. And if there is no international legal uh, <clears throat> definition of that yet, it would be very ur urgent to, to make one. If this nuclear chicken game goes wrong, for starters, all nuclear weapon depots in Europe would be a target and be reached in a few minutes. And there would be no more Germany. Ever since Putin announced the existence of the new Russian nuclear systems on March 1st, 2018, like the hypersonic missile Avant-Garde, intercontinental missiles with 20, uh, it, which is an intercontinental missile with 20 Mach speed, highly maneuverable, then the hypersonic cruise missile, Kinshal, nuclear powered cruise missiles, fast underwater water drones, laser weapons. <clears throat> the possibility exists, therefore, that Russia could position its sea-based nuclear hypersonic cruise missile Zircon at the coast of Washington, D.C., of which Russian military experts have said that they can reach Washington so fast that the United States president has no time to escape on Air Force One. The war would not be regional, regional. it would involve U.S. and British targets as well. Tulsi Gabbard has made a video where she shows how all the U.S. cities would be hit by these nuclear weapons. The warmongers have set us on a path to nuclear war with Russia. And when the nukes start flying, you'll get an alert like the one that the people of Hawaii got on our phones four years ago. At 8.07 Saturday morning, cell phones started buzzing with a message saying, seek immediate shelter. Seek immediate shelter. A missile may impact on land or sea within minutes. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. Now they told us then we had just 20 minutes to find shelter, but they didn't provide any. There was no shelter. <laughs> but I don't even know where we go. And we are on our way to find shelter. So people cowered in bathtubs and parents lowered their children into manholes. I've never had this feeling in my life of being completely, utterly helpless, knowing that your death is coming and you can't do anything about it. When the Russian nukes are incoming and our leaders tell you to seek shelter immediately, you will realize how our leaders have failed and betrayed you and your loved ones. We must stand together and stand up against these warmongers before it's too late. That reality would be clear to the population. They would immediately try to get rid of the political leaderships who say heavy weapons to Ukraine, even if that involves the risk of nuclear war. And you can fill in who of these politicians have said that in the recent period. It's terrible that we have a war in the middle of Europe. Putin did start it, 
But Patrushev, the head of the Russian National Security Council, said that this occurred at a moment where the statehood of Russia was in danger and that it was a preemptive, quote, technical military action. That they had proof of a pending major Ukrainian attack on the Donbass, and this following after eight years of what Putin has called genocide, in which 14,000 civilians have been killed. It is clear that the West never responded to the Russian complaints about that, and many of these char charges, charges have indeed been confirmed by the OSCE. Now, what is at play here is a basic assumption that the US, the U European Union, Global Britain, NATO, all are the good guys, and that Russia and China are the bad guys. Therefore, only the rules-based order is good with Western values, and those who don't have, quote, our values, uh, you know, are, uh, you know, bad, and therefore NATO East expansion is not a threat to anybody because NATO is good. It's not a threat to Russia, not a threat to NATO, nor, uh, nor, nor is Na global NATO a threat to China. That is the narrative but it is not the truth. The policy of boiling the Russian frog, or what the British call boiling the Russian frog, has been there since the end of the Soviet Union. Step by step, go for the encirclement. James Baker III on the 9th of February told Gorbachev several times that NATO would not move one inch to the east. There are many time witnesses who have confirmed that. Genscher is on a video uh, to be seen saying that. In reality, when the Warsaw Pact dissolved, NATO lost its raison d'etre, and it would have been absolutely possible to make a peace order. There was a historical chance, like it only comes once in a century. We called it at that time the Sternstunde der Menschheit, the star hour of humanity. We proposed as a peace order, first the productive triangle Paris, Berlin, Vienna, which was supposed to beef up the economies of the Comic-Con. When the Soviet Union collapsed in 91, we extended that to be uh, into the Eurasian land bridge, uh, and we called it already then the New Silk Road. But almost at the same time, there was a CIA study in 1991 saying that Russia has more raw materials and better skilled labor power than the United States, and therefore economic development of Russia would not be desirable because otherwise there would occur, there would develop a competitor on the world market. And as a consequence of that kind of thinking, Jeffrey Sachs, the professor, uh, implemented in not only Russia, but all of Eastern Europe, the shock therapy, which in the case of Russia led to a demographic collapse, which resulted into 1 million Russians less per year because the death rate was so much higher than the birth rate. Yeltsin was the darling of the West, and only when Putin came in and started to reverse this decline of Russia, the demonization of Russia started. And it had nothing to do with what Putin did, because Putin was very open for cooperation with NATO, with the West, to work on the common European house, as Gorbachev had put it. But he did not agree the putting Russia into the status of a third world country, only exporting raw materials. But he started to, you know, re-industrialize, or he tried at least to re-industrialize uh, Russia and give it some uh, status as a global player. The demonization of China occurred when China, which was, you know, first regarded to be some country which could be integrated into the liberal order by letting it join the WTO. But when China succeeded with its economic miracle and not submitted to the Washington consensus uh, and not accepted a liberal democracy, the attitude changed very quickly. 
China was able to lift 850 million people out of poverty, but especially when the Belt and Road Initiative uh, was put on the table, giving the developing countries for the first time the chance to overcome poverty and underdevelopment, the systematic demonization of China happened. And now it is an irony that the combined campaigns against the West, against Russia and China, accelerates them to go for an alternative system, especially together with the weaponization of the dollar and the euro, they have no other choice than to create a new financial system. Now let's take a look at the situation in Germany, because that is a key factor that Germany is not a sovereign country. And that has to change quickly if Germans want to survive. Chancellor Scholz on April 22nd said no heavy weapons to Ukraine, that he would do everything to prevent an escalation which could lead to World War III. It took exactly three days later until he announced that Germany would send Gepard tanks when Secretary of Defense Austin conducted a big meeting in the airbase in Rammstein. Scholz also went for a 100 billion armament program for the Bundeswehr and is pushing now a 2% increase of the military budget to be put in the Grundgesetz in Germany. That means Germany at this point is doing exactly what the US and the British want them to do as a faithful vessel. What the social democracy is doing to former Chancellor Schröder right now is a complete disgrace. Schröder has one big, uh, you know, uh, has done something very good. That is that he did not allow Germany to participate in the war in 2003. But he is being made by the SPD right now into a pariah. The SPD is now undertaking a complete revision of the detente policy of Willy Brandt and Egon Barr, namely the policy of change by approach, which was the reason why it was possible to have a peaceful unification of Germany, which was not self-evident given the role of the Germans it was the Nazi war against Russia in the uh, Soviet Union in, in the Second World War. Now, the new uh, head of the uh, SPD, Klingbeil, announced that he would make a complete re review of the relation to Russia, which in parenthesis, the foreign minister Baerbock wants to ruin, like you know other people in the United States and even Le Maire, uh, French finance minister um, want to absolutely crush, ruin, smash Russia. I mean, these were all words used. And Klingbeil also said that he wants to start the relation with the East European countries. Now that thinking to, to denounce the tradition of the detente of Willy Brandt, of the East policy of the SPD, is completely oblivious to the history. As I said, the German unification would not have been possible without these stepping stones. So they behave as complete brave vessels. That is why we need urgently a new security and development architecture in the tradition of the Peace of Westphalia. And that can only occur if it comes from a combination of international countries which then outflank such stupid policies like that of the German government right now. What this Peace of Westphalia conference, which we push are pushing to be convoked, must start with. It must establish the five principles of peaceful coexistence, the so-called Panchel, which was established in 1954 by India and China, and which is still to the present day, the only formula which can be the basis for peace. First, there must be mutual respect for each other, territorial integrity and sovereignty. Second, there must be mutual non-aggression. Third, mutual non-interference in each other's internal affairs. Fifth, equality and mutual benefit. 
and peaceful coexistence. Then I would add to that, there must be in light of what I said about the uh, destructive power and danger to humanity of nuclear weapons, there must be a mutual elimination of all nuclear weapons based on the principles defined by Lyndon LaRouche in his famous, what then became the Strategic Defense Initiative, which is the idea that all nuclear powers should work together to make nuclear weapons technologically obsolete through the development of new weapons based on new physical principles. There must be a re reorganization of the hopelessly bankrupt neoliberal financial system because that is the drive for war. The reason for the immediacy of the war danger is that the transatlantic financial system is about to blow out in a hyperinflationary collapse. And that is why they are so desperate not to allow a different system to emerge. This step, the first step has to be the implementation of a global class deagle banking separation to end the casino economy for good. Then in every country, there must be a national bank in the tradition of Alexander Hamilton and the first national bank of the United States. Third, there must be a new credit system providing low interest long-term credit to overcome the underdevelopment of the developing sector. Then, because we have right now uh, 1.7 billion people facing starvation, 2 billion people who don't have access to clean water, which is a reflection of the fact that the present productive capability are not enough to maintain the present population of 8 billion people. Therefore, we must increase the productivity of the economy by an order of magnitude, which means we have to have a crash program for fusion development. We are very close to breakthroughs and commercial fusion is absolutely in reach if we now uh, go for a crash pro program. And we need international cooperation in space. Internationally, we have to build together a village on the moon a city on Mars, and eventually interstellar space travel, uh, because please show the picture. There are, according to the Hubble uh, telescope, and now we will hear more from the James Webb telescope, there are at least two trillion galaxies. And one human species is barely enough to investigate the laws of our gig gigantically big common universe. Then with the reorganization of the financial system, we absolutely have to build what we pro produced already in 2014, a blueprint for a global development, the name of which is the new Silk Road becomes the world land bridge. Please show this slide. Then the lesson to be learned out of the present incredible Russophobia, uh, xenophobia, hatred against other people. We have to have a dialogue of the best traditions of all cultures. Because if all people would know the beauty of the Chinese, the Russian, the Indian, the African, the Persian culture, and many other cultures, well, it would mean you would start to love these cultures because knowledge of these other cultures means you all of a sudden see that you become so much richer by knowing them. So the most important element to overcome the present existential crisis is something which is right now absent from politics, but it is in the nature of human beings and therefore we can mobilize it. And that is love of humanity.